Hey everyone, welcome. This is the Tinnitus Virtual Summit. My name is Dr. Ben Thompson, audiologist and tinnitus specialist. We're here with a special guest. This is Joey Remini from Australia. How are you doing today, Joey? Hi everybody, so great to be here, thank you. Of course, of course, thank you so much. So Joey is a vestibular audiologist and neuroplasticity educator, and she founded seekingbalance.com.au. And one of her core programs offering the tinnitus community is a 12-week self-study course called Rock Steady. And Joey, how have you been over the past few months working with your clients as we're in these times of COVID-19? How has that been for your community? Actually incredible, because I, I, I knew that anxiety is an underlying feature for both my tinnitus and vertigo clients. And so I was thinking, oh, you know, how are they going to do with this added fear that's like everywhere in the supermarkets? It's, you know, all the face masks and gloves. But interestingly, because I already offer it online, that piece was smooth sailing. There was no change there. My clients are at home clicking their support features. They've got things for panic attacks and things for helping them sleep and videos and audios to help them connect into what matters and their joy. And a lot of people have been saying, oh my God, I'm using this lockdown. I'm just totally into rock steady. I'm doing my healing. I'm learning about neuroplasticity. So plenty of them are also saying they, were, they had a lot of social anxiety with getting invited to go out places when they hated saying, no, I don't want to. I don't feel well enough. So there was a little bit of relief that the COVID-19 situation kind of gave them this bubble of not being invited, not feeling bad about being at home and having this kind of socially acceptable space of being in their own little bubble of healing and getting to know themselves and practicing a lot of self-kindness, self-compassion and these new, new mindsets without the interruption of the outer world. So that blew my mind actually. So a lot of my community were, were quite uh, res resourced, well resourced, well supported. Yeah, sounds like a resourceful bunch. Taking the time to make a deeper dive into these practices and with your clients, with those who have gone through your program and work with you privately, do you have any comments on the relationship between the initial program or taking those initial steps and then the continuation to continue the progress? What is your comment on that? Yeah, it's a really good question. Look, it's the work I do. So I work in integrative neuroplasticity, which means we're no longer looking at the ears or the brain or this or that. We're looking at the whole person, which means we're looking at how do I relate to myself? How do I treat myself? Am I rejecting my body? Am I rejecting my sensations? Can I pause and feel into it and ask my body, hey, why are you screaming at me? Why are you pulsing at me? What's going on there? What's underneath that? So it really becomes a way of life. It's not like they go through my six modules and the videos and audios and then they're done and they, they go back to the way they were living. Not at all. It's really we reinvent ourselves. We recreate our... Um, in, in entire approach to life and a lot of my clients will have relationships change careers change their their entire life becomes interwoven with their values the things that really matter to them the things that bring them inner peace and joy and so I offer a 12-week program but really it's a lifetime and a lot of people will come back to it so they a year later they may actually re-engage log back in and start that self-study and inquiry again because they're like, oh, I think I'm I'm falling off track again. I'm losing it. I've got to, I've got to ask myself a few questions and re-engage. So I would say it's more a way of life. Yeah, that's crucial with tinnitus and the mind-body connection that's often recommended in these holistic practices. The initial learning, action, lifestyle change, and then continuing the progress. Yeah, definitely. And for those of us who are watching who may be excited to learn about what neuroplasticity is and mm -hmm. break down that complex term into, mm -hmm. a, into layman's vocabulary, could you explain that and how it relates to tinnitus, please? Yeah, totally. So, so as you know, tinnitus are sounds that we hear in our ears and body, and they're essentially normal. Our body does create sounds. So it's not something we have to get rid of or worry about, but where the neuroplasticity comes into it is we have the ears creating neural signals to the brain that are interpreted as either, you know, boring or safe, or let's just ignore this, or, oh my God, I'm dying. I hate this. Get rid of it. So then the neurons that are carrying the sound signal to the brain 
are going to impact how you feel about it. Because if you have neurons that are firing in a, I'm freaking out and stressing out and panicking and oh my God, Dr. Ben, fix me. If that's happening, those neural signals are really strongly impacting the way you feel, okay? You're entering a freak out. Whereas if we hear body sounds and we're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I can hear my heartbeat or I can hear a humming or a buzzing. That's kind of cool. That's neat. The, you'll feel curious. You'll feel open. You'll feel lighthearted. You'll feel playful. Now, what happens with neuroplasticity is it, this is our body's ability to adapt and change. So as neurons are communicating, they're like neuron cells in our body sending chemical messages between each other. The message results in how we feel. And pretty much everybody who Ben and I work with want to feel normal, want to feel healthy, healthy, happy, all of these things. But generally speaking, they're feeling self-doubt, they're feeling loss of confidence, they're feeling isolated, depressed, anxious, angry, you know? So what we need to do using neuroplasticity is to change how we feel despite the sound signals being transmitted. So a lot of my clients are learning how in a daily practice to stimulate neural patterns of feeling inner peace, feeling confident, feeling steady, feeling stable, feeling excited, enthusiastic, vital. And neuroplasticity is not a generic thing. It's not like everybody does exactly the same program every day. It's 100% tailored to whatever the person wants to feel. So the goals are unique, the process is unique, and how we get there is unique. So that's where my education tools are about discovering what do I want to feel and how can I cultivate those feelings? How can I engage those neural pathways? So mm. I hope that answered that. It's a pretty big question. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. We're only scratching the surface, but it was a great answer. Thank you. So someone may be watching this and thinking, well, how do I know if that's going to work for me? And mm -hmm. one way that I try to categorize different people on the tinnitus journey is that uh, acute versus chronic, right? So did someone just discover this, just have the tinnitus happen three weeks ago, and now they're going to the internet, now they find us, they find you, they're looking for solutions? Or is this someone who's had it for five, 10 years, it's been bothering them for about that much time, and, and then they realize there's something they can do about it. So how does your program and neuroplasticity for tinnitus affect acute cases versus chronic cases? Yeah, I, I guess it's kind of similar to what I said before. It's not, it's not actually about tinnitus. It's about our relationship, our relationship to ourselves and to our body. And the people who engage in my work, first of all, I offer oodles of free stuff. So you can like completely stalk me online and visit my YouTube channel and podcasts. And I think it's through the discussions, through the conversations and through people going, oh, wow, you know, this kind of spiritual edge to... How am I connecting to myself? How am I connecting to my world? How does this change how my biology fires? People start to get really intrigued in that process of a, a deeper sense of healing. So often, and so the answer is both. I get both acute people and chronic people. I've had people with 30 years of symptoms completely heal and recover and return to normal. No longer hear their body sounds at all. And I've also had people who've had it, you know, just 10 days ago and they're freaking out. They find my stuff and they're straight in to learning about it. I think the common element is whether it's been 10 days or 30 years, they arrive at this point of, oh my God, I want to do something about it. I don't want to waste another moment. I want to learn about my biology. I want to learn about my spirituality, my emotions, my mindset. And I want to learn to use this power within me because the reality is, and I think we all know both vertigo and tinnitus are invisible symptoms generated by the inner ears that the brain is misinterpreting. Doctors and medications can't do much about it. It's like an invisible disability. And there's a huge mental, emotional and spiritual aspect towards healing in that we have to learn to trust our body again. And we have to learn how to reconnect physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually to who we are as a person. And that's what actually helps the brain to, to reset, rewire and recalibrate. So I think for my clients, it's really that they're kind of they're eager to enter the self-development and to go what can I do about it I've exhausted the doctors I'm down with medical clearance but now what and I'm the now what yeah absolutely and part of our collective mission working in a holistic sense with tinnitus patients is to educate the providers and doctors who get to the medical point of I've 
try to find all the cures and I can't. So when they tell the individual, they just have to live with it. There's nothing they can do. Part of, part of our collective mission is to educate about these kind of mind body practices so that they can instead have that conversation of, well, there's some things you can do if you're willing to spend the time to do the self-development with the right guidance. That's what I believe. So I was thinking about some questions to ask you, and I was thinking about the relationship between mindfulness, the lifestyle, and then meditation, the seated, seated eyes closed practice, and then body scanning, the mm -hmm. eyes closed practice, and neuroplasticity. I'm having a little trouble relating all of them, be, particularly in reference to neuroplasticity. So how would you relate all of those uh, practices together? Um, I've just written a book about this, so that's going to come out in fall, I think, which will be October, November this year. So that's exciting. But I think the simplest answer is whatever we feel, right? If everybody was to close their eyes right now and just go, okay, what do I feel? What sensations, whether it's in my toe, whether it's in my heart, whether it's emotional, whether it's, you know, my neck scarf, whatever we feel corresponds to a neuron firing to the brain, sending a message of that sensation. So it doesn't matter whether it's a, a sound sensation, a touch sensation, an emotional sensation, it's a sensation. And so when neuroplasticity comes in is when we engage in any kind of practice of presence. And at the end of the day, body scan, mindfulness, meditation, they're all one and the same. They're just different names, different communities, different whatever. It's all about being present, noticing, feeling, removing the judgment and being able to lean into what we feel and, and sit with it, allow the brain to analyze it in a really safe, loving environment, which is where the self-compassion and loving kindness practices are so healing. And then from that place, instead of a sensation coming in and triggering the fight, flight, freeze, anxiety, panic loop, and that cycle, that vicious cycle of repeat, we can sit with it, feel it and go, hmm, I'm not dying, it's not so bad. Actually, I can lean into this. I can get curious about this. I can describe this like an artist. I can begin to actually change that neural pathway. So the neuro, neuroplasticity is the body's capacity to adapt and change. The feeling only happens in the present moment. You can't feel yesterday or tomorrow. You can only feel neurons firing now. So it's the combination of presence and then non-judgment and awareness. And then I think the exercises that I've really pioneered and contributed to this community is the what to do about it. Because we can all sit and body scan forever, but that doesn't change anything. So it's really, well, what do I do with the things I'm feeling? How do I recreate them? How do I regenerate them? How do I cultivate my desires instead of be stuck in my symptoms? Thank you. That was a great answer. And I'm looking, we're all looking forward to the book coming out. You said yeah. this fall. Me too, by the way. <laughs> I've heard it's quite an ordeal to write a book and publish it. Uh, so you said this fall, 2020, you, it's going to be released? Yeah, and it'll, I'll, I'll have it on my website. So if you visit seekingbalance.com.au, you'll be able to find the book. And the book, I believe, will be called Rock Steady. So. Amazing. Thank you. I know. Very exciting. That's very exciting. How long did it take you to write? Was it a multi-year process or did you have a full no, I, session, go on retreat or what? Yeah, no, I'm a full focused person. I, I wrote the book really quickly and really comfortably and really joyously because this, this is what I love to talk about. And the passion just oozes out of me. But then I fell pregnant and had a baby. So there's been a whole year of the book actually being written in full manuscript form. But I had to pause it while I created a human. And now I have a little 14-week-old baby. And I'm just like full into the publication, publishing process. So. <laughs> super mom. Definitely super mom. So what is it like for you and your partner and your family to bring a baby into this world during coronavirus during the beginning of this of this shift it seems where economic shift um, a lot of fear out there so do, do you want to comment on that yeah but I'm so biased it's totally blissful we've been in this incredible love bubble I've been using my neuroplasticity skills I play with them all the time I, I give myself little projects to toy with and be like hey, I wonder if this will work and so I've been I had an incredible birthing experience, just the, 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 the hormones and just the feeling of life moving through was amazing. 
and I, I had a super blissful birth. And with that blissed out experience, I've been like practicing really feeling into it, opening up to it, getting my bliss neurons to really grow and expand and multiply. So I've been on this bliss project in my own personal development. Then the COVID-19 comes along and there's no disturbances, no distractions, no one's knocking on our door to invite us places, which is just really precious. And then I get cuddles all night long breastfeeding my baby, which is so amazing. And I keep telling myself one day he'll be an adolescent. He'll just want to, you know, play ball games and mum will be like along. He won't be so interested in mum anymore. So I really, really relish in all the, the cuddles and the breastfeeding. And I allow that to engage more of my neurology and my bliss. So I've really found the COVID-19 to be an incredible opportunity to really stay local, really build beautiful, stronger, loving connections between my husband and my new baby. And also to not take for granted just the simple joy of hugging a friend. Like we still can't do that in Australia at the moment. And when I do see my friends at a distance, it's like, ah, I would love to wrap my arms around you, but it's not, it's not something that, you know, we're doing in Australia yet. So I guess I've enjoyed it. That's my answer. <laughs> it's been nice. Thanks for sharing some of your personal side there. Um, yeah, when are we going to be able to shake hands and give hugs? Um, there's, I don't think there's a clear benchmark or turning point. So it'll be a, a slow, gradual process to get back to that. I wanted to ask you, so before you started Seeking Balance, and how many years ago did you transition from working in a clinic with hearing and tinnitus and dizzy patients to going online? How many years ago was that? I think it was five, five okay, years. Great. great. So before five years ago, or as that transition was happening, um, what inspired you to create this holistic offering, to create seekingbalance.com.au, to create Rocksteady. What inspired you uh, to create those offerings for the dizzy and tinnitus communities? Well, I had them. I experienced both distressing vertigo and freak out tinnitus. And I was at Melbourne University. I was working with the most smart, intelligent, elite medical practitioners. And I was like, wow, and like no one can really help me. Like, you know, it's like, here's a medicine or here's a bedside exercise. Here's a referral to a psychologist, but see you later. And because I had that incredibly strong, robust grounding in yoga and yoga really is the heart of neuroplasticity. And, that, and as a yoga student, I learned how my body could change if I adapted, if I had daily practices and, a, and a, it's all the repetition and exposure stuff through yoga, I saw my body change. I began to notice, you know, mental and emotional changes depending on where I put my focus and how I spoke to myself. Um, then I've got a background in psychology. I did further training in cognitive behavior therapy, acceptance, commitment therapy. And all, all, both of those were fully based on yoga practices. So it was just, I was like a fish in water. Um, anyway, so it wasn't too long until I realized there was all these skills out there that were so directly beneficial and complementary to the vertigo and tinnitus sufferers who are effectively being told go home and live with it there's nothing more we can do and that's where i was like oh my goodness there's so much more we can do there's a whole unexplored territory i couldn't believe nobody else was doing it and so i became my first client well and truly went through and healed myself and i did experience pretty full-on anxiety and depression for a period there found my inner resources, found, used the self-study observation non-judgment processes to reset and recalibrate my own system. I no longer hear my tinnitus at all. I no longer experience vertigo. So I really did come back to normal. And then I distilled that into a 12 week process where I, I used a lot of my vestibular audiology training, my psychology background, my yoga, mindfulness and neuroplasticity work and created a step-by-step -step methodical process that people could go through as you mentioned, if they're willing, if they're open, if they want to. Mm. And I, I do think one of the most powerful and key pieces is the spirituality piece, which for me is not religion. It's my beliefs. How do I believe in, do I believe in myself? How do I connect to myself? How do I connect to my community, my global community, the planet? It's like that alignment piece of where do I fit into the world? That to me is the, 
the spiritual piece that I think is often missing because a lot of people are feeling out to sea and are feeling disconnected and are feeling numbed. And so being able to reconnect back into who am I and how do I fit into this world uh, can actually be a really an essential part of healing. And that's certainly the feedback I'm getting from my clients who are going through their journey and having all of these insights and, of course, noticing their bodies completely change and rewire and they're engaging in that neuroplasticity quite effectively. Mm, thank you. So, yeah, it's well known that the power of faith is with the power of belief. That's a, that's a part of this underlying all of this. And I wanted to ask you, so for someone who may hear spirituality and have some stigma associated with it or feel like oh that's not for me hmm. um what what do you say to someone who's giving you signs that they're that they have the internal and external resources to to make progress with their tinnitus but they're but but they don't seem to have the power to make the step or for some reason they're they're not making that step uh what, what would you want to say to someone in that position it's okay not to be ready you don't have to make any changes. You don't have to do anything. It's perfectly fine. Just meet yourself where you are. Because every day is new and it can just be that moment one day where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fully, I'm heart open. I'm ready for this. And until that moment, you're not ready and that's fine. Yeah, that's a great answer. Any, <laughs> any self-development should be approached from a good place, from, from a place of, of, of positive feeling, not from a place of fear or... I have to do yeah. this now. This is my I mean, only chance. Yeah. I openly say to people, do not purchase my programs if you're experiencing desperation. If you're in that place of scramble and grabble, just use my free resources, wait for the dust to settle and really pause and go, am I actually resonant with this process? Because it's mm -hmm. a huge waste of time and money if you're just wanting some quick fix and you're desperate and you're not actually wanting to go through this process, it's an incredibly powerful, subtle self-study self process. And it, if you're not ready, it's a waste. You know, it's just, it's not happening. So pause and wait for the dust to settle. Get those, get the immediate supports you need to actually be able to concentrate, to breathe easy, to hopefully sleep. And then you're in a better position to actually engage in self-study and learning. You know, I use the analogy of learning the piano all the time because it's like if you're freaking out and sleep, de sleep deprived and super desperate and you just want someone else to teach you how to play the piano now, it's not going to happen. You know, it's got to be that slow process of getting a piano, finding a teacher you like, finding a few scales or tunes that you enjoy tinkering with and then slowly doing it every day. And neuroplasticity is a bit like that. If you're seeking inner peace, you can't wait for somebody else to give it to you. You've got to find a way to play with that feeling of inner peace every day in your body to buy out those inner peace feeling neurons more often every day. So it's, it's a process of doing and feeling that you really create. And the best neuroplasticity exercises are the ones that people create for themselves. They completely invent them. So my program really gives people the resources to get started and then I'm like create your own do it your way there you have it guys do it your way so this is Joey Remini and we're here for the tinnitus virtual summit and Joey has a website seekingbalance.com.au and the 12-week self-study course that was mentioned during this talk is called rock steady Joey thanks so much for being here I'll let you have the final words for us Love your body. Your body is on your team. And if you are hearing sounds in your body at this moment, I believe they're there for a reason and that it's possible to tune in, to connect, to smother them in loving kindness. And while that can sound hippy trippy, it shifts the way your brain relates to those sounds and they can be refiltered out so you no longer hear them. So find the love, reconnect and enjoy your body. Thanks guys. See you soon.